Hi, I'm Sean Hunter, executive producer for the Leadership Development Channel here at Skillsoft, and we're here to take the conversation out into the hall, as it were. Uh, typically, content providers, people that we bring into the studio, they stand behind the camera and they provide all kinds of wonderful application, contextualized content that we can provide to you to make a difference in your workplace. But it is so quite typical that we go out in the hallway and we have these fantastic electric conversations with our content providers and speakers. Then we want to share some of that with you. We're sitting here today with Barry Liebert, uh, the author of We Are Smarter Than Me. Thanks for having me today. Absolutely. And of course, Aaron Strout, he's the vice president of new media for Mazinga. Now, you guys have, have written a book and you're working in this world of crowdsourcing. I'm not quite sure what this is, but this has a lot of implications on the way that people develop products, how we deal with our customers, how we expand our product lines, even our leadership. And so I want to start by expanding on a conversation that we were having earlier around product innovation. Now, in the old world, how did organizations traditionally develop products and services and bring them to market? So the way you think about the old world is that companies thought they had a monopoly on the people who could innovate. They had a research department or a product management department, and they tasked those people with the idea of coming up with a new piece of research or a new way to think about an existing product and to innovate around that product and to fundamentally alter that product to meet customer needs. They might even from time to time ask a customer or two, what might you like differently than we provide today? So you're saying that, for, by and large, organizations, they're looking internally. They're focusing on themselves. It's a very kind of insular environment where organizations were find, figuring out what works and didn't work, but they weren't really asking their customer, or maybe they were in isolated cases. So what's changed and what's available now, and what are some organizations doing that's cutting edge to bring new products and services? Well, Sean, there are new tools, uh, communities, and new philosophies on including your crowd. Uh, you and I were talking a little bit about something called crowd casting, which is not just reaching out to all 6.2 billion people on Earth, but finding targeted groups of people that can help you with your problem that aren't necessarily your employees. And so by tapping into this, you can present them with a problem, present them with the ability to help solve this problem. We talked a little bit about Dell's idea storm, where they can submit an idea, people can comment on it, and then the crowd can come in and rank those ideas. And that's a great filter for a company like Dell to be able to see what their customers want, what's interesting to them, and what new products they can turn out as a result. Yeah, but crowdsourcing, or crowdcasting as you refer to it, has a lot to do with crowd alignment, right? And now in Dell's case, they were able to use their own captive audience to effectively, they had crowdcasted effectively, but how do you today make that alignment between the products and services that you're trying to create and your audience. So I think it's easier than you might imagine. I think crowds want to come together to be, help companies be successful. I think companies have to accept the fact that if they ask a crowd to be helpful to them and are prepared to reward the crowd sufficiently for their efforts, if they put in front of them a task that is well-defined, crowds will come together like they've done for Dell and help them innovate. Another example we will both talk about is Procter & Gamble, where Procter & Gamble wanted to find a new uh, extension to Dawn soaps, and they used people who watch their daily soap operas, advertise them, and said for the first time, help us innovate, give us some fresh new ideas, and therefore they engage the audience, not just advertise to the audience. Okay, so. Now we've figured out how organizations have developed products and services in the past and how to maybe leverage some of these new technologies. Uh, what, I'm a busy middle manager today. How can I take all these fantastic available technologies, crowdsource, crowdsass, crowdcast, and create that next iterative product? I'm busy. I'm a manager today. What can I do to put these ideas in action? Well, I think it, it boils down to a fundamental skill in the business place, something Barry's talked to me a number of times. Listen, it, it's essential for you to take the time. You have to carve the time. You have to schedule the time to sit down and, and make sure you're looking at this feedback, interacting with the crowd, and then taking those ideas and using them in whatever way uh, you, you normally present ideas, whether it's to your management or to the board, and say, guys, here's some great ideas, and we're hearing it from our customers, and I think we need to put it into action. Okay. These are fantastic thoughts. Thank you. Thank you. Sean. Thanks for having us today.